Hello guys and welcome to my new video. So today I decided to make a healing guide, basically an overview of each of the healing classes, how hard it is to play each of the classes, and maybe basically a guide for new players who are hoping to either start healing, to re-roll from DPS or tanking into the healing role, players who basically decided that they're going to spend majority of the time looking at other player health bars, because basically that's what healing is all about. Um, prioritizing health bars, prioritizing other people, making sure um, making sure you know the damage patterns because a lot of the healing classes require you to know where and when the damage is coming out, how the damage is going to come out and how to prepare for it. And this video hopefully will give you an overview of some of the uh, of all the healing classes and basically I'm going to kind of rank them or at least give an overview of how easy it is to start with each of the class and if you're a beginner healer you can watch this video and maybe uh, think about maybe starting this healer because they're quite easy to start with. Or maybe I want to start uh, a more difficult healer because I feel I know a damage pattern so I can pick up the gameplay pretty, uh, pretty quick and things like that. But this video is all about the healers. This video is all about how easy it is to start a healer and an overview of each of the healing abilities and basically an overview of the healing. So let's start with... A class that a lot of people actually will say that it's one of the easier healing specs. A lot of people will say that if you're new to healing, you probably should start playing this healer um, because there is not a lot of there's not a lot of things to learn about it. It's very reactive healing, and that is Holy Priest. Holy Priest is quite a reactive healer. The the healing toolkit is basic in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of people will tell you that it is. You don't really need to know a lot about Holy Priest to actually output a good amount of healing. Um, a lot of the type of the healing the Holy Priest would do, would, you would see people losing HP, people are going lower in the um, health bars, you'll just use your Holy world, Word spells, uh, and you heal them up, and you use your other healing spells, and you basically wait for Holy Word to go back up, and then you rinse and repeat. So that's like, that's like the very basic general overview of what Holy Priest is all about. Uh, Holy Priest tier 20 is actually insanely insanely good because it complements Holy Word. Um, tier 21 is looking very very weak. So if you're a type of a uh, type of a player that enjoys having strong tier sets, tier 21 is definitely probably the weakest of the healing sets. Holy Priest by the by default are quite I immobile. Uh, they do have the feather. The feather is okay-ish at most cases. A lot of new players might find the, the feather is actually quite hard to use because you actually have to place it right underneath your feet and, you have to, and it gives you a speed boost. Uh, a lot of new players don't tend to tend to misuse feather a lot of the times. Uh, so it's not the best mobile, uh, mobile ability that a new player can use, but over time it can be really, really optimized. Uh, in terms of legendaries, Holy Priest is the only healer in the game that has a legendary that allows you to die and say that it was all intentional, that it was all planned, it wasn't a mistake, there's no way I stood at the fire by accident because there is a legendary cloak that allows you to die, go into the spirit redemption and come back without using battle res, you get the reset on your potions, you get more mana, So, and this is one of the best legendaries to use. So you most likely, if you do get to play Holy Priest, you'll be looking forward to getting a legendary cloak and dying on fights and saying it was all intentional. So that is probably the most new player friendly mechanic or a new player friendly legendary in the game right now. And Holy Priest seems to be like a very, very good choice for new players, um, for someone who's looking into actually start playing a healing class and maybe a reactive healing class because you don't want to know the exact damage patterns. You want people to go down in HP and you want to heal them up. I don't care about knowing when the damage patterns come, comes in. I don't have any preparation that I need to really do. Players lose HP, I heal them up. I'm a holy priest. Um, so keeping with the priest team, we're gonna go to a Healing class or healing spec because ho because priests have two healing specs. They have holy and they have discipline. And discipline priest is way way different from what holy provides. First of all, holy is raid healing spec. This priests are also raid healing spec. So you have two raid healers. Keep in mind the holy priest uh, disadvantage. Like I said, it was in immobile. A lot of the spells require cast a decent amount of casting time. So 
on heavy movement fights, Holy Priests are going to lose out because they can't really cast on the move. Uh, they have a casting times. A lot of the major abilities have casting times. So for fights like where there's constant AoE or where there's constant movement like Avatar, Holy Priests were not the best. So you're going to this priest. This priest is a lot better on the movement. They can handle movement a lot better than Holy Priest. But this priest are a lot harder to play. I would never recommend this priest to a new healer. Because this priest is all about knowing the damage patterns. It's all about the preparation with atonements. You, you get as many people with atonements as possible with the help of Radiance. Uh, because you get them ready with atonements. When you know the damage is about to come in. When the damage is about to come in, you use your Light's Wrath, which is basically a healing cooldown on 1.5 minute uh, cooldown. So it's one of the shortest healer cooldowns in the game, but it requires an immense amount of preparation. Like, this priest is a definitely proactive healer. It's not very reactive because, in terms of HPS, in terms of healing people, if you, if you haven't prepared your atonements, if you have no preparation done, people lose half a HP, you can't really do that much. You, you're almost expected to have your atonements on everyone or on a lot of people. You're expected to know the damage patterns, you're expected to know when the damage is coming in. A good, exa good example where this quiz is very strong is Mr. Sajin. Because when you start the fight, there's not a lot of damage coming, so you set up your atonements, you see that the green arrows uh, the people get picked by the greenhouse and you know the damage is gonna come in in the next five seconds or next four seconds or whatever so you have time to prepare you use your you set up your atonements with the radiance etc and then you use your lights wrath when the damage came in and you basically heal everyone up to full you skyrocket on hps as number one healer and gg what what does it require knowing the damage patterns as a new healer as a new player to the game this is going to be very hard, so I would not recommend the new player to start with this priest, I recommend start with like Holy Priest and then once you know the fight better, try out this. So let's keep, uh, let's keep going and we'll cover right now Resto Shamans. So Resto Shamans probably have the least, uh, probably have the best mana region in the game uh, because of Resurgence. Uh, I've seen logs through, uh, I've seen a lot of logs in Resto Shamans and they get a lot of mana back from it. So. Rest of Shamans are probably the, going to be the last choice for your Blessing and Wisdom, so your Innovates, etc. But in terms of healing, Rest of Shamans are amazing raid healers. They probably have the widest toolkit for raid healing. Rest of Shamans have two AoE spells with relatively short cooldowns um, that are used most of the time. You have Chain Heal and Healing Rain. So these are two spells they will be using in a raid for like most of the fights. Uh, on stack to fights, it's going to be amazing. Uh, most healers have like one healing cooldown, maybe some of them have a bit more, but rest of shamans are, they're just built for raid healing. They're built for raid healing. Keep, keep in mind that healing rain, your artifact ability, they are both, they're, they're spells that require placement. So you need to make sure where the raid is standing, you need to know where the raid is going to stand. If you're placing healing rain or, or your artifact ability, uh, somewhere where the raid is going to shift the next second, it's going to be completely uh, wasted. So you do need to know the positioning of the raid. That's really, really important as a Resto Shaman. Uh, another thing, Resto Shamans are relatively immobile, but they do have Spirit Walker's Grace, which allows casting on the move. And Spirit Walker's Grace is, it can be made really, really powerful um, with Graceful Spirit Talent, which basically allows you a pretty high uptime on casting on the move. Now. What it requires you is to basically know when to pop this uh, ability when you're going to be moving a lot. You c for example, you might uh, you might be standing in some fire and you pop it, you pop Graceful Spirit or Spirit, Walk Spirit Walker's Grace, you cast for two seconds and then you realize I don't have to move anymore and it's wasted. And then 40 seconds later or something there's going to be a heavy movement, for a heavy movement uh, intermission and you kind of wasted it. Also another thing about it, the, the difficult part, you have a lot of... Um, timed abilities, things like Cloudburst Totem. Cloudburst Totem is one of the best talents for raid healing, which kinda which kinda requires somewhat planning. Um, it basically takes in uh, takes in your healing uh, that you do to a raid and builds it up into a totem and then it's released. The release of the healing from the totem is completely uh, completely managed by you, so you can choose when to do it. 
The problem is that you can't waste it. Like, for example, you pop your Cloud Burst, you pop your Balance, you pop your Ancestral Guidance, and you're about to cast those, ch uh, cast those Chain Heals, Healing Rain, Healing Rain, you're about to go ham with your healing. And then you realize there's a heavy movement involved in the next two seconds. You completely forgot about it, your, uh, your Spirit Walker's Grace is on cooldown, Comple then everything gets completely wasted. Resto Shaman casting is actually really, really long. Resto Shaman kind of healing is about casting long spells. You only have like Riptide and like Healing Stream that are instant and you don't have to worry about them. But everything else is quite long. So there is somewhat preparation required if you are in a farm raid. You kind of have to pre-cast Chain Heal and things like that. In terms of difficulty, Resto Shamans are not too hard to play. But I feel in order to actually really master Resto Shaman, you kind of really do need to time your cooldowns really properly. And because of how long the cast, uh, cast time of spells is, you do need to prepare for movement and things like that. But I, like, like I, like I should really mention that I feel Resto Shamans are so many like mid tier. Uh, I should also mention that I feel that most of the healing classes are actually, in terms of difficulty, are very close together. Uh, as, except for maybe this priest. This priest was, would probably be one of the one of the more difficult healers to start with. Now let's go to Holy Paladin. So Holy Paladin, uh, I have a Holy Paladin myself and I play it and I, I might say that at the start you might be daunted by the amount of healing cooldowns that Holy Paladins have with the default healing build. You have a lot of cooldowns to keep track of and relatively not that many healing spells. So it's more like, like a cooldown oriented healing class that is completely reactive. There is very little preparation needed. So kind of similar in terms of like Holy Priest or whatever. People lose HP, you heal them up. Unlike this priest, you don't care about preparing, uh, preparing your Thomas, preparing your spells beforehand. You just heal them up when, they, when, they, when the health drops. All of these type of healers are actually quite easy to learn. Because, like I said, preparation is always harder than just reactive healing. Um, uh, Holy Paladins, by default, are, have very good tiers, or by default, have very decent tier 20 and tier 21, which, um, which helps out with beacon healing. So by having an extra beacon healing, you're spending most of your time. So you, you might be saying, like, I don't want to be a tank healer. I don't want to just heal the tanks. You won't be healing tanks. You'll be just placing a beacon on the tanks and you'll be healing the rest of the raid. And your tank healing will be, uh, you'll, you'll be the best tank healer by just having beacons on them. And that's to do with how tier 20 and tier 21 uh, is going to have, is the abilities that they have because they complement beacon healing. So for the people who are worried that they're just going to be spending, uh, spend time healing the tanks, you won't be. You'll be spending, you'll be, most of your time you'll be holy shocking raid members. And holy shock is immensely satisf satisfying to use. The crits are just insane. Holy Shock is like really, really fun spell to use. Um, now the difficulty with Holy Paladins comes in. The positioning is important because of how mastery works. You do more healing the closer you are to your heal targets. Um, so you either have to position yourself correctly or have a very good law uh, rule of law usage, uh, and you also have to spec into the talent. But in so that's what makes mastery either a good stat or a bad stat. If you position yourself way outside of everyone else, then mastery is not great for you. But general rule of thumb, just go to the melee and heal them. Uh, they have a medium ability. Uh, the horse is okay. It's pretty long cooldown. It's not the best. It's not the worst. You do have a bubble, which can be insanely powerful. Uh, because bubble can actually remove certain abilities. Like, for example, in Maidens, when you get the bomb on yourself... You can just bubble it off and you don't have to jump down. You just keep healing and you're like, I'm a holy paladin. I'm a paladin, I can bubble this. I don't need to care about mechanics. What it requires you is basically to know when to use it. Uh, if you're about to die and you don't use a bubble, I mean, it's useless. You need to be a really reactive with this ability. Um, in finance, holy paladins are probably one of the best. Uh, an amazing healer in finance, one of the best healers probably. Uh, they, have, like, they have one of the best burst healers. Healing spells available in the game through the Beacon of Virtue, which basically allows you to heal. It just works so well in 5-man environments. It works so well in 5-man. It's just built for 5-mans. You're going to use your Beacon of Virtue. You're going to use a Holy Shock on someone who is low HP. And the whole group from like 20% or like 10% HP goes up to full in like a couple of seconds. The problem with that, Beacon of Virtue has 15 second cooldown. So if you waste it, 
you're stuck with single target heals or at least with light of uh, light of dawn for that time but unlike resto shamans where in five man content resto shamans uh, basically cannot use any of the healing spells or aoe spells efficiently chain heal and healing rain is really hard to optimize really inefficient it depending on talents and builds and things like that but in mo by the by the default builds healing rain chain heal is inefficient in five months amazing in raids so rest of shaman is stuck with using healing surge healing wave like single target healing abilities in aoe situations they're stuck with using that while holy paladin can just use beacon of virtue and heal everyone up and then go to the single target healing uh, so in terms of five man healing they are exceptionally good and actually quite easy to learn medium difficulty medium to easy difficulty i feel that holy paladins at the very maybe at, when you start leveling it you see all of these cooldowns you know like oh my god what i'm going to do after a couple of weeks you'll be like these cooldowns are easy holy paladin healing is actually relatively easy as i said reactive healing is always easier than proactive healing let's have a look at the last to healer so let's have a look at the rest of druid i regard i regard rest of druid as um, very easy to learn at the very start because for the longest time in legion based on the talents based on the tiers based on legendaries they're available for rest of druid rest of druid could have done amazing healing by just spamming rejuvenation that, that was an actual thing in this expansion where rejuve spam was actually was like one of the best things to do uh, things have changed a little bit, but Rejuve is basically the iconic spell for Restoration Druids. Restoration Druid style is way different than any other healer that's available right now. It is a class where HOTS can actually will do the most of your healing, or can do the most of your healing. Uh, a lot of the other healers maybe have some kind of a HOTS, some kind of a heal on the go. While Restoration Druid, the whole healing is based on healing, or healing on movement fights or movement intermissions or whatever so knowing when to heal or how to heal when you move is very important through the use of specific add-ons and mouse over macros or add-ons like clicky you need to make sure that when you move you can actually place rejuvenations and things like that it's very very important if you want to play resto druid because resto druids are not stationary um healers you can basically jump around all the time while healing as a resto druid which can be uh, part of the fun but like i said rejuvenation is the iconic spell it is a big portion of your healing uh resto druids have another he uh, aoe heals to wild growth which is a cooldown so it can't be spammed to the same extent with tier 20 there was a lot more um raid awareness needed in order to ensure that your efflorescence was healing to the max uh, so if your raid wasn't stacked up or your raid was are you placing your efflorescence like way out of everyone's reach you would do pretty pretty bad now tier 21 is looking to be like one of the most passive tiers in the game. So rest of Jews are going to be back. Their rotation or healing priority is going to be a lot is going to be a lot simpler. Uh, for essence, it's not going to be that big of a part of it. Um, so the way I regard it is basically easy to start because there is not that many spells. Uh, you have a good raid cooldown, tranquility is easy to use, it heals a lot. Um, but I feel it's very it's kind of hard to master or do well on fights like on farm content or on fights where you're over healing so if you bring in like six healers for heroic content resto druid is all about placing hots uh, and if when the person takes damage let's say let's let's take this as, as an example um you're playing resto druid everyone dips down to like 50 50 percent hp and you're just now placing rejuvenation so you're placing rejuvenations you're encountering the global cooldown uh, based on your haste you're placing rejuvenations on everyone on your grid or your health bars and then you just notice your holy priest or your holy paladin just uses their aoe abilities because they're more reactive healers and everyone just goes to full hp and then you can see your rejuvenation on the full target just ticking away taking away and going into overhealing and there's nothing you can do about it and um, so on these kind of fights if you want to look better on the meters it is very very important to pre-hot so place rejuvenations before the damage comes in so what does that mean you need to know the damage patterns you need to know when there's a big aoe burst that's about to come in so garot for example um you know that the arrow someone's going to be selected by the arrow there's going to be a big aoe incoming so 
5 or 10 seconds before that, you want to start placing rejuvenations. Now keep in mind, rejuvenations cost mana, and if you spam too much rejuvenations, and if you don't use your innovates properly, you will go out of mana. It is very easy to go, go out of mana as a resto druid, because you forget about how expensive rejuvenations can be, especially with talents like germination, where you can place two rejuvenations on a target. So keep that in mind, but an efficient pre-hotting before the damage comes in, so you pre-hot everyone, damage comes in, your rejuvenations are ticking, your rejuvenations are doing healing, maybe someone dipped below 50% and you're using cultiv cultivation or whatever, and you're getting more uh, more hot, great, you're actually doing a bit, uh, uh, quite a bit of more healing. On fights where there's constant AoE damage, like Maidens, putting rejuvenations means that most of the time rejuvenations will do the least amount of overheating but like i said resto druid is actually quite easy to start with there is really not that many spells to get used to um you have amazing survivability with bear you need to make sure to know how to shift in and out of bear form at the right times because bear form is basically one of the best personal cool uh, personal cooldowns that you can have with no cooldown and uh, which makes it which makes us druids almost like impossible to to die unless you don't know the fight um, Resto Juice is one of the sturdiest healers actually, it's actually really really cool, um, but like I said, you need to make sure that you pre-hot, you need to make sure that you know the damage patterns. Um, in 5 man scenarios, it can be quite overwhelming on your Rejuve finger, because you will be rejuvenating nearly everyone in your party, even if there is no damage. Why will you be doing this? Why, will he go, why would you do this? Because in 5 months, Mana is not really much of an issue, and by having as many hots on your targets in five months, when the damage does come in, the unexpected damage comes in, you're gonna have those hots, you're gonna be able to regrowth, or you're gonna be able to efflorescence with tier 20 or whatever. And knowing that you're going to do you're going to be doing more healing on those targets because of how mastery works. Mastery is going to increase your healing on the target based based by how many hots you have on them. So Having as many hots on everyone is quite essential, and especially in higher keys. So, 5-man healing can become a little bit exhausting by the amount of preparation you have to do. When you compare it to someone like a Holy Paladin, where the damage comes in, you're just basically waiting for everyone to fall 50, but below 50% or whatever, and then you just press your Beacon of Virtue, and then you press your Holy Shock, everyone's full HP. When you compare a Resto Druid, if you don't have the preparation, Everyone goes below 50% HP. You're gonna have to go Wild Goat. You're gonna have to go Rejuve. You're gonna have to Rejuvenate. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna have to Regrowth, and it's gonna take you a long time to uh, get everyone to full HP. In order to combat that, everyone needs to have Rejuvenations on them. So it can be a little bit exhausting, but um, I feel Rest of Jude is a good starting class. Hard to master. Hard to play in farm content or when you overheal content by quite a bit because of how other healers are going to snipe heal you basically. Heal everyone up before your hots can do any of their work. So on farm content, is it's not crazy to see things like 50% overhealing for Resto Druid. It's not crazy to see that. Uh, keep that in mind, but I think Resto Druids are a very unique class, are very different from every other healer. Uh, it's all about the hots, it's all about the uh, proactive healing, it's all about making, sh making allowing your hots to do their work. So let's have a look at Mistweavers. I actually regard Mistweavers... In terms of gameplay, actually a little bit similar to uh, Resto Druid. Quite a few of their spells are actually similar to what Resto Druid um, uh, toolkit is. So like you have things like Essence Font, which is an AoE spell. It has a similar cooldown to Wild Growth. Then you have Enveloping Mist, um, which kind of can be regarded as like Life Bloom because Enveloping Mist is like is used for heavy single target healing. Then you have Renewing Mist, which is basically a hot on like 8 second cooldown. Because it does have an 8 second cooldown, Renewing Mist is regarded as a smart rejuve. It basically is a hot on a person that's going to heal them up to full or is going to... Once that person is full HP, Renewing Mist is going to jump to another target. Rejuvenation is not going to do that. Rejuvenation is going to be ticking. Renewing Mist is going to jump to another target. So it's a smart rejuve on 8 second cooldown. Um... Mistweavers are regarded to be maybe a, lit, a little bit more not player friendly as Resto Druids. I think Mistweavers are actually pretty easy to play. Uh, you can pick up, up Mistweaver healing quite easily. 
I feel that there's a big a big misconception about how hard Miss Weavers can be hard to play in order because because there's so many there's so few people who play Miss Weavers and they're regarded as bad. But I feel Miss Weavers are actually quite good five man and raid healers. Their tier 20 is good. Their tier 21 is looking to be even more amazing. So I feel Miss Weavers are going to just go up in terms of viability, in terms of HPS. And I really don't think that they are really that hard to play. Mana can be an issue, but the same thing can be with Resto Druids. Technically, with Mysterious, you can also go out of... If you don't know what you're doing, you can be Oom um or out of mana at like 50%. When the, when the boss is at 50% and you're like, hmm, I'm doing something wrong. That can happen. But Mysterious also have a, basically something similar to what the rest of Druids have in terms of Innervate. So you can spec for mana regen specs. If you feel a bit crazy, you can go Fist Weaving. Fist Weaving is... Um, Mistweaver healing style or mana regen style through DPS so you can go and DPS the boss DPS the adds and gain some mana back so it's it's a it's a cool tool it's a cool way to actually regen spells it does require different talent choices but it can be viable it can be fun uh, so you have two different choices available with Mistweaver now so this has been the video um in terms of in terms of basically how hard it is actually to pick up each of the healers I would consider Probably, like this is my personal opinion, I would consider um, Holy Priest, uh, Resto Druids, probably one of the easiest starting healers to pick up. Uh, of course, when I say these, when I say starting healers, it is really, it, it can be easy to start, but hard to master. But I feel as a Holy Priest, Resto Druid, you can start healing pretty, uh, pretty well from the very start. Like I said, Resto Druid does have... Um, more consideration to do when there's over, when you're overhealing content and to pre-hot so it requires you to actually know more about damage patterns so i actually would probably bring in holy paladin there as well because holy paladin is a lot more reactive um so holy priest holy paladin probably resto druid somewhere in there and then and then probably mist weavers holy paladin sorry mist weavers resto shamans somewhere in the mid even though it can be argued that they can be also relatively easy. There's very little between these healers. Honestly, honestly, if I would really have to rank them, I would rank every healer except this priest as similar uh, as a similar difficulty. This priest just has too much proactive healing. There's too much setup. It's all about having setup. It's all about knowing the damage patterns. And if you're a new healer, if you're a new uh, player to a certain fight, it can be incredibly difficult. The skill ceiling is really, really high. A bad disc priest will be bottom of the meters. A good disc priest will be top of the meters. So there is a big, uh, there's a big margin of error here based on the skill. But like, but like I said, I feel a lot of healers are very similar in terms of healing. I hope, I hope that this video has provided uh, some kind of an insight into each of the healers' capabilities, each of the, each of the healers. Uh, Healing styles, proactive, reactive, tank healing, raid healing. Hopefully this will uh, help you with the choice of basically picking which healer to play or maybe re-rolling into a healing class. Um, I recommend every healer, maybe not this priest, this priest for the start or for the new healers. But if you want to play this priest, I would highly advise you to try out Holy, Holy Priest first, know the fight and then try your hand at this priest. But anyways, thank you for watching this guy. Let me know how you feel about the healing ranking. Let me know how you feel about uh, my opinions about the healers. Leave a comment below and like and all of that. It really helps out the channel grow. And I'll see you in my next video.